There was once a plant so effective at healing soil that early European and American farmers used it to restore fields that had turned to dust. Its roots built miniature underground chambers that became home to earthworms, microbes and fungal networks. Crops that followed this plant thrived without fertilizer. Yet, as agricultural chemicals took over, this crop was quietly banned in many regions, not because it failed, but because it threatened the fertilizer industry. That plant is vetiver grass, a deep-rooted, clumping perennial that still holds one of the most powerful secrets in regenerative gardening. It doesn't just build humus, it builds worm castles underground. Vetiver's reputation was controversial, not because it harmed the soil, but because it refused to fit into modern farming systems. Its deep roots, often stretching down 10 feet, stabilized soil so well that plowing became nearly impossible. When chemical fertilizers and machinery became dominant, governments classified vetiver as an invasive obstruction in certain regions, fearing it would interfere with mechanized farming. The irony is that those same deep roots made vetiver one of the best soil building plants nature ever produced. Where it grew, soil erosion stopped, worm populations exploded, and organic matter accumulated rapidly below the surface. Today, regenerative gardeners are bringing it back in small-scale systems where plows are no longer needed. In a garden bed or food forest, vetiver can perform miracles that even compost and mulch cannot match. It builds permanent worm tunnels that stay active year-round. Vetiver grass grows in tight clumps, sending thousands of fine roots straight down into the subsoil. These roots release sugars, amino acids, and natural mucilage that attract bacteria and fungi. When these roots die back, they leave behind hollow channels filled with organic residue, perfect worm tunnels. As earthworms move in, they use these tunnels as safe passageways, breeding and depositing castings along the way. These worm tunnels become more than just passageways. They act as vertical compost tubes that channel air and water deep into compacted layers. Over time, entire networks form beneath each vetiver clump, stable structures that persist for years even after trimming or cutting back the grass. The secret lies in vetiver's unique carbon chemistry. Its root exudates contain compounds like ferulic acid and phenolic carbon, substances that resist rapid decay and encourage the growth of actinomycetes, the same microbes that give healthy soil its rich, earthy smell. These microbes are the bridge between bacteria and fungi, breaking down tough organic matter and stabilizing humus in the process. When vetiver is used as a cover crop or border plant, it feeds these microbes continuously. Even a small patch creates what soil scientists call a microbial vortex, a hot spot of underground life where decomposition, nutrient cycling and moisture retention all accelerate. This is why worms gather around vetiver roots in huge numbers. They're not just attracted to the moisture, it's the microbial feast taking place in the rhizosphere. Unlike invasive grasses, modern sterile vetiver cultivars such as Vetiveria zizanioides do not spread by seed. They grow in dense, non-invasive clumps, which makes them, you know, ideal for garden use. The best way to plant them is in narrow trenches or along the edges of beds. Start by spacing clumps about 12 inches apart for borders or every 18 inches if you're intercropping within vegetable plots. Each clump should be about the size of a handful, planted four inches deep. Once established, vetiver requires almost no maintenance. Just trim the leaves two to three times a year and use the trimmings as mulch around fruit trees or compost piles. The root system continues to develop below ground even when the top is cut back. Every time you trim, the plant naturally sheds older roots which decay and create new worm tunnels. Within a season, soil that was once compacted or lifeless begins to feel spongy and aerated. 
For gardeners looking to repair dead or clay-heavy soil, vetiver works best when used in combination with organic matter. After planting, apply a two-inch layer of compost or decompose mulch around each clump. Water it well for the first few weeks to stimulate root growth. Once the roots hit moisture below, vetiver becomes almost drought-proof. In areas where worm populations are low, pairing vetiver with a nitrogen-rich mulch, such as half an inch of grass clippings or comfrey leaves, can, well, really jumpstart microbial activity. The ratio is simple. For every one square meter of vetiver planted area, add about one bucket of green mulch monthly during the growing season. This feeds the microbes that in turn feed the worms. Over time, you'll notice that vetiver doesn't just improve the topsoil. It actually pulls life downward. The roots act like biological pumps, drawing nutrients and minerals from the subsoil right into the root zone. As worms consume this organic matter, their castings concentrate those nutrients exactly where plant roots can access them. What was once banned for being too strong for modern agriculture is now proving to be honestly one of the greatest allies in regenerative gardening. Vetiver may have been forgotten by chemical era farmers, but its ability to restore soil and build worm tunnels faster than any compost or fertilizer really makes it an essential plant for today's gardeners. If this guide helped you uncover the hidden power of vetiver and the natural systems that feed your soil from below, make sure to subscribe to Soil Doctor and share this with another grower who's, you know, serious about rebuilding life underground. The next time someone asks how you revived your soil so fast, you'll know it wasn't magic, it was the banned cover crop that builds worm castles beneath your feet.